Good morning everyone, my name is Christian from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome to the first episode in our second season of Path of Exile. In our first season we created a character, we just explored Path of Exile as it was, a bit chaotic like we would have played it for the first time and only added very little knowledge along the way. At some point added in a loot filter because I wanted people to see the screen instead of the multitude of items that you find in this game and uh, yeah we made quite a, a slightly successful character not the best nothing that can push endgame but it was a lot of fun and I'm gonna show you what are we going to find if you haven't seen the first episode let's go quickly over what we are working with today and I will be picking the source of this uh, give me a second it's f it is not for the first time in a sense that I am doing this I have actually started recording Path of Exile with the new league last night it started for me at nine o'clock in the evening and I recorded for like uh, two hours last night, woke up early in the morning and recorded like another... In total I had nine, I think nine episodes? Some, I think nine episodes in total I, I recorded. And then I realized that it, it is for the first time that I'm using like multiple screens with uh, the guide on one, with path of build on the other, path of build being this, let me show you, like this app that shows us the allo points allocation and the last screen is the path of exile. And being, trying things out, I've made a mistake in two of my episodes and I've recorded the wrong screen, the right audio, but the wrong screen. And what can I do? I'm trying to push the limits, I'm trying to get better and better at, at it, but I'll make many mistakes. And so I decided to scratch everything I've recorded, even though I've made some progress through the game, and get uh, started from the beginning. And so, we're following an Arc Elementalist build made by TBXE. And his guide is going to tell us what we're working with. You can find it yourself on this uh, link. And we're going to follow along his, um, his advice, what we should do in the beginning. And we can see here that for starters, uh, before we create a witch, we can create a scion to grab an onslaught support. This is a support skill which provides Onslaught, that we can only get from the Scion. The Witch gets it at the end or in Act 3, which is a bit ahead. If you want to know what Onslaught support does, we can go quickly. So Onslaught PoE. And we're going to check these things out. You can see them that I've accessed them before because I recorded an episode yesterday. Onslaught is a buff that grants 20% increased attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. So this is one way which will boost our speed and our map clearing at the beginning of the game. It will help us level, and so we will do just that. For today, in order to make sure that I've not, I'm not going to make any of these mistakes, like showing the wrong screen, I found a old monitor <laughs> and I connected that as a secondary monitor for myself. And so it's it's not perfect. I can't see much. I don't have your support because I'm not doing this on stream. I'm sure chat would let me know uh, if you were there present. Well, let, let's keep the talking. Uh, but it's going to do the job of showing me what screen I'm recording, thus not making a mistake anymore. I'm hoping. Who knows what else will appear that I haven't thought about this yet. But hey, everything is for a better future. So we're creating a new character. This time it's not heist anymore, it's ritual. Discover ancient altars and perform dangerous rituals to earn valuable rewards. This is the default Path of Exile League. We're not gonna go solo self found. I wanna trade during this league. And so let's get this going. And we'll start by creating 
a scion. I have an idea in mind for what type of character I want uh, with a scion. There's a build I found on the internet. For now, let's call her Helen of Fire. Okay, the name is not taken. So what are we doing? Well, we'll start. We're starting with her. Why not just execute? One cool thing, one cool addition they've added in this uh, in this new update is you can see the the commentaries that the characters have right here on the right side of the screen in the chat menu, and I love that because there's many times many of these comments that the characters made that I've missed because I wasn't uh, either I was in a fight or things like that and I couldn't uh, basically it wasn't loud enough so f you can see we got our support skill onslaught right when it starts the the buff starts at 10% chance to grant onslaught and get 20% chance uh, Oh, it's 10% when hitting a unique enemy and 20% when we're dealing a killing blow. So that is the support skill that we are going to use with the witch. I've seen builds with this kind of ability as well, with the throwing weapons. We're gonna pick some of these. As we want to fight with Hilak. This works very well if we're just straight up fighting him. He healed himself now. He's a bit more dangerous, so we'll have to dodge him. Though he's pretty easy to do so. A pretty easy boss, but not to be underestimated. Always go to the left. You can see that his hits hurt. Maybe we'll uh, just... just Face plant him. Let's see. You today, dead man. Uh, what do we want? Do we want to go wand? Let's get a wand here. And that's it. Let's continue. It doesn't matter. Like the rest of the items don't matter. The only thing what that we're gonna drop in the box. For some reason it crashed. I was saying that the uh, the, the items don't matter too much. The only thing that we're gonna drop here is the onslaught support. And we're gonna throw that, let's bring in one of these stashes forward. And to the onslaught, I will throw in uh, these as well, the flasks. As you can see, uh, I've made... I've um, ordered things up. So we have flasks here, we have a few gems. I'm not gonna use any of them. This is from our first playthrough, like, <laughs> as I said. A bunch of hours I've recorded here, but I'm not gonna use any of them. I want this to be a pure, uh, a slightly pure build or series. And we might use some of the items later on, but not right now. Okay, we'll pick on the witch. Let's call her because we want to go elemental lightning, daughter of Perun. God of Lightning. If you want to know more, I guess, either watch some old Crusader Kings 2 with Slavic Nations. And there's some really interesting... There's some really cool lore about that. When you choose Perun as your patron deity. The dead will soon rise for me, not against me. And... Or you can watch Yaga, the series that we have on the channel, where they talk about Perun as well. 
I tried yesterday to call her the daughter of Zeus, something more usual than her rune. Um, however, that name was already taken. And so we have our first character. We'll reach in the town and then I'll show you what is our next move. Since I've connected the second monitor on the right, I'm starting to feel more and more like a professional content creator. Becoming a, a slightly more professional content creator by making all the mistakes in the books. And I think I have said this before in my history, in my videos, uh, that the more I am doing this, the more uh, appreciation I have uh, for for the other content creators that I've watched for years. People like uh, Splattercat or Quill18 or Gamer Zack. Uh, there were at some point when Minecraft was uh, was big. Um, yeah, we'll apply it here. I'll sh we'll look over the points in a second as well. But when Minecraft was big, there was that community called Vine Crack, and there were a lot of YouTubers that I found really fun to watch, and they were doing these streams with donations as well. Like uh, collecting money for charity, things like that. Really enjoyed watching them, and I'm I'm really impressed looking back now at the amount of effort they've put in. It's like they really ran everything they had like a business, and I think they were doing pretty well. We also have an updated version of uh, of our loot filter. Let's see. A free link, eh, maybe we'll keep the link, I'm not sure we're gonna do much with it. Let's identify this helmet, throw it on, identify the robe for the energy shield. And now as we're getting into town, we can go and pick our, our reward. Stay sharp. Deluxe reward, freezing pulse, rolling mana, lightning tenders, raise zombie, blight and kinetic bolt. We're gonna go, I'll take freezing pulse for now. We have Navali in town as well. I rescued her in the last mission, because you don't find her until we you rescue her. We got our new quests here. Let's also take a look at the ones. I need a blue and a green for us and so let's pick this one up sell the rest mm, yeah just You're like back. that throw this one here and now let's talk about our short term plan and for that I will be needing my other screens and so we'll start with this one. It says this. We will need to pick up an explosive trap from the vendor to start your journey uh, and to go kill Al Rake and clear the mud flats. And we need frost bomb at some point, supported by onslaught and explosive trap. This will help us clear the map quicker. Traps are really good, but they're statics because they're traps. And it's gonna give us a lot of damage really quickly, we don't have to stay still, and you'll see how this goes along. After killing Brutus, you'll be able to add added lightning damage to our Frost Bomb. At the same time, from level 12 and onward setup, we have here, we need the Arc, which is a skill that will get a level 12, and a few other... Um, Supporting gems and auras and stuff. But we'll start here, right? Frost bomb, onslaught, and explosive trap. And let us just start with that, because that's what this two this is about, this playthrough is about. Nessa, please give me XP. 
explosive trap first of all and let's see do we, we have we don't have these the bomb just yes like the frost one i'm guessing we'll get it pretty soon so we'll throw in here the explosive trap i'll leave instead of the fireball i want to throw in freezing pulse and with this one with the wand i'm gonna set it here in our secondary slot just to throw in some gems that we might need later on okay so what do we do now? I will bring in Freezing Pulse here. Goodbye. We will be taking the Onslaught Support Gem and add it here. Take some of these flasks. And so that we can move uh, quicker. I'm gonna slightly cheat here. Let's see if I cancel... Do can this no this will just we don't have an item that will remove the properties from the flask so let's see maybe I found another one here yeah I'll use a quick silver flask just to move quicker throughout the map okay what little help I can offer is yours I will be selling free life flask to get a medium like flask. While we live, and we I want to bring. Let's bring like uh, two of these down portal scrolls and have three of these. Just so it goes slightly faster. I don't really care for this gem, but maybe if we find a ring, it's going to be useful. That's it. We travel to the tidal island right now. Freezing poles on the right click and Q for explosive Just like my sisters traps. Upon the pyre. I hope I am not going too fast. I'm trying to make this a bit quicker than last time and get to the most interesting part. I'm sorry I cannot give you a, a new experience for the stuff that I was experiencing for the first time like I can't show you how amazed I was for these altars and things like that but I can talk more about them now I have a bit more experience so what happens with the altars first of all you have to take care of the enemies in some of the enemies that are guarding the altar and when you start it shows you what it will do monsters deal extra fire damage and can ignite meteors fall from the sky so let's activate it and now we'll have a few to fight a few monsters that will spawn here. They're not easy pickings, but by killing them, you can see here we're collecting tribute. What do we do with tribute? Well, we have two rituals remaining on the map, so you always know what you can how much you might be able to collect how much tribute you use tribute in order to buy different items more more of these of the hidden items will be revealed by doing the rituals in an area if you have enough tribute you can buy one of these items if you don't have enough tribute you can defer an item Meaning you can spend, as you can see there at the bottom, deferral fee. You will be spending some of your tribute to hold this item until the ritual on a different map. The items are being reset on every map. Your tribute is reset on every map. So the only way in which you can ensure that an item stays in here is by deferring it the only thing that uh, remains after resetting after moving from one map to the other is only if you've bought an item tributes is resetted every map from what i understand so far you can also re-roll all the items in an area for 600 tribute it's up to you if you want to do that but you will see this as we go along, things will start to make more sense. 
there's a chance that you'll get some really cool items and there's a big chance that you'll receive a lot of items that you really don't need. Uh, one more thing before we move on, let me show you the point system. What are we going for on level up? And here is Path of Build, where we have imported the build that we're currently following. And we are going to, on the right side, so we are going to we go with Energy Shield and Mana Regeneration, and we're going to take these nodes of intelligence. First of all, I am going to go to the left with Deep Wisdom, getting Energy Shield, Mana and Intelligence. We will get Heart and Soul, increased life and mana, and I want this 20% increased spell damage. 5% increased cast speed and 20 intelligence. Good damage early on is always good. I am also going to pick Arcane Wheel because it will increase our mana. And it also starts regenerating our mana per second. Plus a bit of extra shield. Finally, I am going to pick Nimbleness because I like that increased cast speed and the 4% movement speed. So that's what we're going for early on, just so you know in the future. I'm, I'm looking now on the other monitor just to make sure I have closed all the windows <laughs> that I am not showing at the moment. Quite excited to play with a second monitor. But you can imagine that I feel bad that, uh, that I've lost so much footage. It was quite fun to play it for the first time, even though it was quite late in the day. And there was also, you know, the fatigue you get from being excited. I imagine that for some people uh, it was maybe early in the morning when the update released. And that was a lot better for them. But yeah, what can you do? Life happens. But I really hope that you're gonna enjoy this series. I am very curious to know because at the time of this posting, it has been a bit over a day since the release of the new league. And I'm very curious, did you start playing Path of Exile? I really hope you did. If not, I'm hoping that this is a video like showing you how to f follow a build. Which is not difficult, but it definitely helps to watch someone else do it for the first time. At least it helped me. Okay, now we have more tribute and we can use it to buy a jeweler's orb, a sash, scepter. I guess I want to see what these items are and then we'll decide what we get. So let's see, where do we find the third ritual? I'm gonna use a lot of these traps. Wool shoes, nice rawhide boots with three links. That is pretty good. It's better than these shoes, I'll tell you that. Mm, and I think that's about it. It's better than those shoes because they have the colors that we might need. With the Frost Bomb, with Onslaught. And there were also a few challenges that I got early on for uh, participating in the content of the Ritual Altar. We're taking a look at challenges and achievements. You can see that to get this first ritual encounter, you need to complete a ritual, spend tribute, and defer a favor. That's all you need. And you can complete a lot of these encounters for the first time. If you reach 12 challenges, you get a ritual weapon effect. At 24 challenges, you can get a ritual character effect. And finally, a ritualist hideout at 36 challenges. I am really excited for the hideout, I'm gonna try my best to get as close as I can to 36 challenges. 
I, we, you definitely can do 12. 12 are pretty easy to do. So if you want to start small, start with that. Mm, there's one more ritual that I want to discover before going forward. And this will happen a lot. It, this ritual leak makes you go back and front and uh, trying to find ritual sites. Uh, I spent a lot of time just doing this. Because there are some really cool items that you want to to keep or to move to the next point where you can afford it. It's a pretty interesting uh, mecha mechanic, I guess, to s somehow entice you to make the best decision on what are you spending your tribute on, which is a resource that you use and lose on every map. What I am going to try to do during this league is that we are going to try to get as far ahead till to the end as we can. We are going to work really hard on creating, maybe we'll be able to defeat the Maven herself, I doubt it. Generally speaking, those bosses are kept for the people who, who are experts. Path of Exile, if I can call them that. Okay, I guess I'll buy a Jeweler's Orb, because these are pretty useful. And other than that, we should be spending our rituals. Let me show you. So we start with 544. We'll get a Sash. It gives us some Fire Resistance. And that's about it. This we will not keep from map to map, so it's good a good idea to spend it. If you have nothing that you want to keep. But as I was saying, I want this series to be pretty long. I want us to spend a lot of time trying to get more endgame bosses. I want to push myself further than ever before. And there are many ways in which you can customize your experience in this a league in this new league with, with the new mechanics on the map on the end game so it, it i was pretty excited like many of the people last night when i first uh, clicked join when so at nine o'clock the league started and i clicked to join i was in a queue for what was it eighteen thousand people so I had to wait in line until 18,000 people were slowly trickling in onto the servers one at a time. Uh, or a few at a time. I don't know, it's, it's a really nice feeling to, to know that there are many people doing the same thing that you're doing. Like looking forward to the same experience that you are. Didn't really have a chance to, to check other streamers. Today, when I woke up, on one side I wanted to see what some of the better players are saying about the league. But then I decided, you know what, why watch others do it when I can experience, my, experience it myself and record for the channel. And I still believe that. At the end of the day, even if I do this all over again. It's still something that I will be sharing with you, an experience that I'll be sharing with you. It's not going to be something very new for me, but it's definitely going to be something newer for you. And if you are looking for different guides on Path of Exile, there's this, like... if. And, and I recommend these guides after you've played it for at least once, at least for the first time and you've reached the end, end game or close to the end game. I don't re recommend this for new players. But uh, if you, if you want to learn more about Path of Exile, there's this guy called Zizoran. 
and he's a YouTuber and actually a Twitch streamer more than YouTuber. But get ourselves a secondary flask there and what? Spell Cascade, Infuse Channeling, we don't need either of these. So I don't know, I will just take an okay. elemental preparation. And we're looking here to get ourselves mm, Frostbolt no. Okay, we still don't have the Got a What is it here, called? If you're willing. A frost bomb. There's a pool near the mud. Stay sharp. Okay, there. we're going for the mud flats. There are better ways. You don't need to do all the quests in order to advance. But we are going to do it. I will be explaining more at another date. For the first time, I, I like to go through all the quests. Okay. Mm, do I need anything else? I don't think I do. I think I'll work with something. One of these setups. Maybe we can even sell a few mana flasks to get a bigger one. And that's about it. With the rest, we're just gonna sell them like so. Take care. What little help I can offer. With this iron ring, I'm gonna sell the iron ring with a blue gem, getting ourselves a sapphire ring with cold Take resistance, care. which will be very useful later on when fighting the mermaid, Marvale. Getting back to what I was recommending, and basically, so is this guy, Cicerone. He's doing a series that's called Path of Exile University. He has done one a few months ago, like three months ago, I believe it was, and now he's creating an updated version of it. And it's very in-depth, it's a tutorial that explains, or is trying to explain everything about Path of Exile. And he's doing quite a good job. Personally, I don't really like him as a streamer. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with him as far as I'm concerned, but his style doesn't fit me. I, I tried to listen many times to, to figure out why I don't like him, but I couldn't pinpoint it exactly. Maybe it's just something as simple as, uh, maybe it's the way he talks or the voice or the setup, I'm not sure. But I, it's undeniable the amount of knowledge that he has about Path of Exile. Like, I really appreciate that about him. And those Path of Ex that Path of Exile University, I feel like it's probably the most in-depth guide that you will find out there. At least put into under that form. Our first row height boots with three different colored links. This, selling this will get a chromatic orb. Another driftwood wand with three links. Padded vest with chromatic orb. So check that out. If you've played Path of Exile before, give this a run a go. See if you like him. Mm. Some people find him to be very user-friendly for people trying to do builds that don't cost a lot of money. He's doing some series in regards to that. Something like called Play With Me. Um, so yeah. Check it out. Let me know if you enjoyed it. At some point someone asked me... Uh, why do I recommend other people to to the people in my uh, case? I guess to the people who are following my series. Why do I recommend other series? And for me, it really depends on the situation. But me recommending Zizren, I'm not a Path of Exile channel. Uh, I so it's not my channel is not focused around Path of Exile. I love Path of Exile, I'm gonna keep playing Path of Exile, I'm gonna keep making series whenever a new league comes out, at least we'll try a new build. Uh, but I also really enjoy other games as well and wanna try out constantly other games. 
So, uh, with this in mind, I don't feel like if people want to learn, like really learn Path of Exile, uh, they are going to be following me. But I would love if people came to my channel or spent time on my channel and now they're checking out Path of Exile. If they really start liking the game for what it is and want to get more in-depth knowledge, I would love them to get some of this helpful information from me. Because I've been looking for it for a very long time and it's it's not as obvious uh, how to use trading, for example, or how to install a loot filter. Or, I, you don't, whenever I used to watch Path of Exile players, the more advanced players, I always saw them use trading and things like that, but I didn't know exactly where to start. So, what is important, what is useful, is something worth a certain price, and things like that. That is not knowledge that they sh share, because that's not what their channel is about telling people what is worth and what is not. Their channel is about creating builds, mostly for the Path of Exile community. Uh, builds which are very cool, something to try out, they're making experiments, putting different skills together. It's really... I don't know... The level of knowledge of the game, it's really something else. But it's hard for new players to actually start picking it up from watching one of these streamers. Um, I, In the first series I wrote down in the description of the video that the person who got me into playing Path of Exile was actually Quill18. And he's not a, one of these really advanced Path of Exile players. He's doing all types of... He's like a variety YouTuber, if I can call him that. Puts out all types of game series. And I really liked... I, at this point, I'm watching him for him, not for the games that he's uh, showing off. And he played Path of Exile a few times. And I started to understand better how a build is put together. Uh, he played, I think, a totem... Sh is it a shaman called? You start with the berserker and he has fire totems. And his series is what got me into playing Path of Exile. That's why I feel like by random chance I got into this game and by random chance maybe other people by watching my series will be getting into this game. And Either they'll love it and they'll try it and they'll continue playing it or they'll move on with their life. You never know. But for now, at least we're having some fun. Okay, another level up. We're doing pretty well overall with the level ups. Where are we now? We're getting mana and life. Let's begin this ritual as well and check some of the items that are available afterwards. Now if I'm going uh, a bit too fast with the series and how things are going, let me know. Life is short. Uh, and let me know what exactly it is that you'd like to know more of. I will do my best to explain as many of the mechanics of this game as I can at my level. Which is a medium Path of Exile player. Every once in a while I'm, I might make mistakes and not know fully um, everything there is to know. But overall I think I'm doing pretty well. And I can at least... Uh, give you some basic information. Let's see, lightning resistance, we can throw this ring in for now. I think we spent enough time here in this map, time to move forward. 
I'll take the superior tribal claw because we can sell it for some really good currency early on. The great thing about a new league is that there's a economy reset. So everybody starts in the first hours of the day from nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nobody has any kind of uh, money or currency, any kind of items, unique items and things like that. And there's a market being created around what people are playing. If Elementalist, for example, is very popular as a, as a build, then many of the items that are used by the Elementals, depending on the rarity, will be expensive. And so on and forth, so forth. Like, things will change from day to day, and it's the community that gives the prices. Let's see. Frost Bomb is good. Orb of Storms will be using it later in the game, so I want to take it with me and level it up. I will be taking thus Frostbomb first. We're gonna throw on it Onslaught. And what else? We have Frost Blink, which I want to add with Arcane Support for now. And from Nessa. Let's get ourselves, what was it, the Orb of Storm? Yes, Orb of Storm, add it into our secondary slots here to level it up. Remember, anything that you add into your secondary slots, even if you don't use it, it will level up, it will gain experience. Hmm. Maybe I'll add arcane support to something else like Frostbomb? Mm, no. If I'm taking a look at. We will need add lightning damage as soon as we get it. Okay. Mm Let's wow. clean our inventory here, sell everything that we found. I guess I'll keep this wand, throw it into the secondary slot as well. Take care. And then do all this. Uh, we don't need the elemental proliferation. What does it do? Increase the duration of elemental ailments. Spreads further the ailments. And supported skills have a 20% chance to freeze. Yeah, well, let's throw that on the, the frost bomb. Does it work with the frost bomb? Let's see. It does. So we can add it there. Maybe it will support the skill for now. Next. The Submerged Passage. Today and tomorrow's episode will be longer, will be about an hour long, give or take, as I want us to have a good start of the series, pretty strong start. And the way I've been playing Path of Exile, I was thinking that I am probably going to add an episode every day. I feel very excited to play this game. I'm gonna play it a lot in the days to come. And so this will be one of those series that will be... Um, uh, that will be shown off every day. Let's see. More Jeweler's Orb. Okay, nothing impressive. I am going to change some things around here though. Let's put the Frost Bomb on W. It does this. So it creates a bomb, it pulses out chilling enemies, meaning slowing them down, and then it explodes. It also gives, if you take a look from the top to the bottom, on the sixth row, it's cold exposure, which means applies 25% to cold resistances, so a minus, a penalty. That will be work pretty well with a few other things that we're going to add later on. Then we have Frostbling. Frostbling is a... Um, what is it? A traveling skill. Which freezes the area where you left and the area where you're teleporting to. I changed the button to space. You can change this into the menu, into your inputs. 
This will make it easier than if you're constantly clicking the middle bounce button. It makes it easier on your uh, fingers. Because Carpal Tunnel is something that happens to games, gamer sets as well. If you're playing a lot, um, yeah, you might get cramps and things like that. Which I've been looking into, like I've been looking online. I was listening to a podcast um, made by Path of Exile content creators. I, I think it was by Pi by Pi, and she was talking about hand exercises, uh, like stretches just to make sure that you are not gonna get any problems with the hands, with your hands, with your wrists, with your fingers as you spend a lot of time maybe sometimes the builds in Path of Exile can be pretty intensive keyboard wise and mouse wise so just to avoid because this year I've been working from home a lot and been avoiding going outside well restrictions and all that I've been looking into doing more stretches or things that would help me uh, protect my my hands a bit more don't want to have any kind of long-term problems with the fact that uh, yeah I'm, I'm not exercising as much as we used to when I'm ready and not in the end even something as simple as going out mm, as it was every day to to work and from work and doing different activities and uh, even that little exercise has gone away. I feel that since I am sitting at home uh, for many more hours, I am really curious to hear about your experiences as well. But I've been working more than usual, I've been getting up from the computer more rarely than I usually did. Every once in a while when I was working in, working in an office with all my colleagues, like we would get up and go outside to just take a quick break. We would motivate basically each other to uh, leave work for uh, whenever we had a break and go outside. But now if there's an emergency, emergency and things like that, don't, everything seems like an emergency, I guess, in a sense. and. I don't know, it feels weird to take breaks. But I've been trying to, to work on being better about that as well. But removing even the simple efforts from our lives has probably, or is still probably, creating problems for us. And we have to adapt. What can you say? Hopefully this year will be the year when everything will be will become better. It don't have to become perfect. Better is good enough. Fire resistant, lightning resistant. I like these gloves, so let's buy them. We it gives us a little energy shield, but plus six life on kill, plus eight maximum life. Even this little bit counts. At this point of the game, everything is going a bit slower, but the speed will pick up as soon as we get to level 12, where when we get our arc, you will see. So we'll just be a bit patient while we make progress here. This is the ledge. Uh, we're looking for the flooded depths first. Because in that quest, we are getting a skill point. And I'll be showing you a command to check if you've missed a skill point or not as soon as we finish this mission. When I'm ready and not before. Mm, we've missed it by quite a bit.
Really love these mines, these traps. Really gives a lot of damage. Uh, let's identify some of these, maybe we'll get some power. Increase spell damage, increase fire damage. I think this will work. And this has increased physical damage. That doesn't really help us. But the, the wands in itself has more damage. I guess we're gonna replace some of these. Let's see. So this is 30 to 39 damage. This will increase it to 31 and this. Nope, it's definitely not better. This gives more spell damage. If it doesn't say that it increases the damage to spells and it just says that it increases damages to attack or physical damage, uh, know that does, that does not add to your spells. It has to mention exactly that it is spells. And the physical damage, that can be actually transformed. There are different modifiers where it says converts a certain percentage of physical damage into um, coal damage or fire damage or things like that. Let's be a bit quicker. If we're using traps, let's make it slightly more faster. This one has a bleeding, so it creates totems like this, which and it, they also influence the enemies in the area to have bleeding damage. Let's see. Ooh, a goat's horn with a lot of physical damage, but nothing else. I got more excited than it was necessary there. Almost close to being something good. But if stuff wasn't bad then this wouldn't have been Path of Exile. You get all the rolls that don't fit your build. Let's have some coffee. I hope you have some coffees ready as well. I really love this morning when I started with coffee and Path of Exile. I don't know, it felt like such a good morning. It's being Saturday as well. Okay, I don't see anything of importance there either. Mm, this game can be play played pretty casually. After you've been through the story the first time, let's say, and you don't care about it anymore, you don't uh, listen to it anymore, and you're just following a build guide, reading every so often, trying to figure things out, uh, you can put in the background a podcast or s some album that you love, and just relax and play the game. Going through builds, going through enemies, leveling up. The first part of the game is always the same. So, after doing it a few times, you know where to go, you know how to get the shortcuts and things like that. An iron circlet. Mm, yeah, could be better. Mm, not really, though. At least if we're going home now, we are going to get ourselves. Farewell. Stay a passive point. Day. So, you can always do this, but especially in the end game, it's important to do this. You write slash and passives. What it will do. It will tell you the amounts of passive points you ha have allocated by the level. Then you have, it will tell you the 
passive points that you get from quests. It says one from Dweller of the Deep. That means that we've used and applied the one passive called from Dweller of the Deep. If at some point you will see zero instead of one there, it means that you have not spent the points there. You have not uh, obtained those passive points, which can be a good indicator to do and not before. to go back and pick up the rest of the points. Okay, uh, we'll go Arcane Wheel now for the regeneration. A simple robe with a free link. If we're finding, let's see, let's augment it to a random. Oh, that's for a magic one. And shall we make it magic? Let's make it magic. So seven life. It's okay, at least it has a free link. We're gonna use it together with something else. Okay, we're on the ledge now, we're traveling to the prisoner's gates, and that's where we're meeting, we're meeting Brutus and we'll have to fight him, and that's also the place where we will be uh, getting our first trial of ascendancy, though I think for the first level it doesn't matter anymore, because I've alwe al already been through the trials of ascendancy so thus being in the same server and not playing the solo, solo self found league or anything like that I think it's gonna be a lot easier at this point I think just playing with with the traps is good enough uh, what do we have here? Some boots, uh, jewelers or might be worth investing in. We'll see. Nice. Most of the skeletons really easy to take care of. Coral amulet, we have no amulet right now. Driftwood wand, let's take this as well. We're looking for more spell damage if we can. Superior fish scale gauntlets. Superior Quicksilver Flask. Okay. That will. Superior Flask generally offer you the abilities for a longer time. So it will make us faster for a slightly longer. Another Quicksilver Flask. Man, we've gotten a lot this game. We are very lucky right now. So let's see here. Forty percent increase movement, yeah, for four four point two seconds. That's not a super increase, but beggars can be choosers, I guess. And we're gonna get more life there. Let's identify this one. Nothing that useful. Another ritual circle. 
This one is another one with fire. Meteors falling from the sky. You just have to watch for the signs on the ground. The cool thing about these rituals is that from level to level, from battle to battle, you will be getting the same enemies from what I can understand, but stronger. Okay. Don't really want anything from here though. These are more strength based, so I wanna get the jeweler's orb, we'll take that. I will take the orb of augmentation as well. And these skill points will be on arcane wheel. The climb. Cool, a lot of level ups here. Let's interact with the ritual site. This one offers enemies energy shield, which is pretty good. Oh, and lightning. Look at that. Ball of lightning that we just have to avoid. I like the traps. They're pretty creative. Definitely something that might kill us later on. Uh, if you take a look at this item, you can see there adds 1 to 5 lightning damage to attacks. Remember, if it says attacks, that means when you hit enemies with it. It's not for spells. Okay, we have our waypoint here. Let's get to the dungeons and I'll be taking a quick break to rest my voice. And then we'll continue, I'll continue recording at least one more episode. As I do want to get this going for you guys, I want you to, to take a look at the first league. Hopefully, maybe even in, give you a reason to try it yourself. As always, that's my, my goal with this series. Show you enough um, interesting information about how to follow a guide and what Path of Exile is about and things like that to where you will want to play it yourself. Give it a good go. Try to understand it. And I really think it's, a, it's one of those games because it is free. Uh, where I feel like sometimes it got a bad reputation and they're not the most successful and they're not successful all the times in bringing uh, the best quality content but other times I really feel like they're putting a lot of heart into it the people at good old uh, at grinding gear games the people at GGG developers So it is for that reason that I am doing this series and why I want people to try this out. Yeah, let's throw that for this chromatic orb. Okay, we have the phone here. Here is where we would have uh, saved the seer, the one who gives us the prophecies, if we wouldn't have saved her in my last trial. Okay, those broke. And now we're entering the lower prison. I'd rather burn than call such a place home. 
And with this waypoint, this is where we're gonna put a cut. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the start of the series. As always, uh, if you do enjoy what's happening here and how the series is progressing, I would ask you to leave a like. It does help the channel grow. It helps me get more exposure. And that's how we get more people on the channel following, creating a community around the games that we love. You know, if you want to follow the series along, you can subscribe, as always. And if you have any feedback or any thoughts about the game, send them to me via email or via the comments below. I always love to hear from you guys. It's a really interesting experience to exchange ideas and put things into practice. But that's about it for now. I wish you all a wonderful day ahead. And I'll see you tomorrow. Till then, have a wonderful day everyone.